purpose of the expedition is to measure the effects on ocean wildlife in the Gulf of Mexico by the, the giant blowout uh, that BP had back in on Earth Day of 2010 in which millions of gallons of oil went into the Gulf up until the middle of August and finally it was stopped and during that time they, were, they used a lot of so-called dispersants to disperse the oil. What it really was for was to hide the oil so that it would be out of sight and therefore out of mind. You know, sometimes when people say, well, uh, are you an eco-terrorist? Uh, my answer is no, I don't work for BP. Uh, I think that what BP did in the Gulf of Mexico is probably the single greatest act of eco-terrorism that's ever been perpetuated on this planet and is still having repercussion, repercussions and that's, uh, that's exactly what, uh, why our crew is down there with Ocean Alliance to uh, determine just what the long-term uh, consequences are of that horrendous oil spill. Paul Watson and I have exactly the same goals. The sort of science which I've been interested in for years is science which works from benign techniques because you don't have to kill an animal to learn something about it. And that's exactly what we're doing with whales. We use benign techniques to learn about them. Roger's pretty much uh, the expert in that field. And so we've teamed up with Ocean Alliance to, uh, to do a survey, uh, actually do some research, uh, unlike the Japanese killing whales are out there uh, trying to find out what is killing the whales. It worries me that BP has been saying the Gulf is fine. As I sit here with the scientists that I know, I'm like, ba based on what information is the Gulf is fine? And yet there's all this anecdotal information from fish with lesions, from dolphins washing up on the shore, shrimp with no eyes. We've seen weird scars on some of the whales. Preliminary analysis is showing quite high levels of, of metals in these whales that's atypical for what we found around the world. It's a scary situation because you've got one group of people saying it's fine, another group of people deeply concerned, and I guess our job is to try to drive down the middle and maybe get a unified story and a unified result. All we can do is try and hopefully that uh, the results of, the, uh, of this research will uh, you know, motivate the government, and if not the government, at least the people to motivate the government to actually do something uh, about the fact that these unrestricted uh, drilling operations where uh, these companies get away literally with murder and the destruction of our, our ecosystems. The, the sad thing in my whole life, there's only been one thing which has been consistent, and that's been degradation. Going back to some of the true splendors of the world, whether they be the Galapagos, Alaska, Papua New Guinea, wherever, and you just go back and there's more garbage and there's less species and there's, there's just more decay. And, and, you know, I have a wonderful daughter and I want her to swim with whales. You know, I, I, I don't want to see an ocean. I don't want to see a world without whales. Who do we think we are if we allow ourselves to just destroy species? Everything which happens at sea affects everything that happens on the land. And so if we don't protect the oceans, if we make it possible to continue to use them as the ultimate cesspool which receives everything that humanity doesn't want, then we will eventually destroy them or weaken them in such a way that we will go, it will be the end of us. They are the thing that matters most.